Okay, the last video we learned how to import models into the motor manager. So uh, we have the list of models that we imported here. Uh, 10 degree, 30 degree, all Tekken Gen 2, 13.5 turn motors. Uh, so we can go into the motor manager and we can look at the performance of any one of those. Uh, if you would like to print out the graph, you can print it out. Uh, clicking anywhere on it is going to display a, the um, RPM value and what the power, uh, torque, uh, current draw, and efficiency is at any point at that particular point. So you can click this around and move it around. Um, you can also change your uh, uh, battery that. Uh, you know the battery performance uh, if you want to look at the battery at a uh, uh, different state of charge and see what the difference is you can change the uh, voltage because as the battery discharges obviously the voltage drops so if we said we wanted to go to like 3.9 uh, you do that and the curves all update to show you how much the performance drops off as your battery is uh, depleted uh, the effect of the internal resistance of the battery, you can also look at that. If you got a uh, much lower internal resistance, you can just change the value there and you can see how much of a performance gain that provides you. Uh, the other thing here is your ESC and wiring allowances, um, your ESC on resistance. So this is normally provided by the manufacturer. And the wiring allowance, uh, that's how much wire you have connecting from your battery. <laughs> excuse me, to the ESC and from the ESC to the motor and that goes in both directions so you have to include both the uh, positive and the negative wire links. Um, compare motors, uh, we looked at that briefly, uh, you can uh, just select the number of uh, different motor models and you can look at the performance difference between them uh, again if you click anywhere uh, on one of these graphs it'll display at that particular rpm what the uh, performance of each of the motors is uh, you get that for the current uh, efficiency and uh, torque as well and again if you want to print this out you can click on the uh, page, <coughs> excuse me page setup and print buttons and uh, print the uh, results out Okay, so let's go and start using these models and see what we can learn. So the first thing we need to do is we need to attach one of them to a car. So we've got this uh, x-ray up here. Uh, right now it just has one of the old generic motor models on it. So let's attach uh, one of the ones we just downloaded. So let's go and let's say we're going to use the... We're going to have 30 degrees of timing. And let's just save that. Close this out, and so now you can see now we have the Tekken 13.5 30 degree motor selected. So let's go to acceleration now and let's see what we can learn here. So, initially, when you go into this, uh, you basically have two cars, and initially they will be exactly the same, they have the same gearing, uh, there will be no difference between them. So, if we want to see the effect of uh, just changing gearing without changing motor timing. And <coughs> we can just click on um, the uh, pinion or spur gear, whatever way we're going, and see what the difference is. So uh, nothing has changed because I haven't calculated here. If you want to enable auto calculate now, whenever you make a change, you go up one tooth, you're going to see the values are all going to update as we go. So that shows you what happens as you increase uh, pinion size to the performance. So car 2 is the red line, car 1 is the default one here. Uh, so you can see here by going up 8 teeth, uh, we've significantly increased the speed. We're now at a gear ratio of 4.3 versus 5 and a quarter where we started. So you can see there's quite an improvement there. You can see the range that the uh, motor RPM is operating through now. Uh, the other thing you can look at is your distance versus time. And here's the interesting one, which is the effect on motor current. Uh, and this is the one that you really want to pay attention to, to get a better understanding of what sort of uh, 
heating problems you may have or what the heating limits are uh, of your motor. The other thing that's really useful here is this summary of results. So this is time to distance. So uh, you can set these to whatever time increments you want. Um, this here, the runtime of the simulation is two seconds. Uh, so this would be two, two seconds of full throttle starting at a speed of 20 kilometers an hour. Um, and at the end of that time, you would be peaked out at here at uh, model one would be peaked out at uh, 50, 55, and the second model with the uh, larger pinion size would be at 62 kilometers an hour. So, and it gives you a difference value in there as well. So, this here can show you how much further down the track you're going. So, car two with the uh, larger pinion would be almost two meters ahead of car one at the end of that two second full throttle run. Uh, two meters, definitely not insignificant. Um, and also even just doing short acceleration bursts, it's going to uh, accelerate faster. Um, the other thing that we can do here is we can change what we're looking at on these graphs. So basically this little uh, pop-up here, so this is graph one, graph two, graph three, graph four. So you can change what uh, is displayed on each any one of these graphs. Uh, it's uh, entirely up to you. The default setting is speed, distance, RPM, and motor current. Uh, well, let's just change one just for, for ex some little excitement. Uh, Let's change motor RPM. So let's change graph two to acceleration. We'll just apply that. So there you can see the uh, acceleration versus time uh, between the two motors. So model two has better acceleration characteristics than model one. So now let's look at what we can do. Let's have a look and see what happens when we change motor timing. So first let's go to let's go to the extreme. We'll go to the high end of motor timing <clears throat> for this motor, which is 40 degrees on the can. Um, now you can see what's happened to the current here. So we are just drawing huge quantities of current. We're drawing 40 amps at a second and a half into this run. So this would not likely be a good setup to try. So let's see what happens when we drop our uh, pinion size down to see if we can get uh, better speed and distance characteristics in our baseline here uh, without you know exceeding the uh, current limits that are that the car number one motor has. So right now, <clears throat> not being very successful. I've dropped down six teeth. I'm achieving pretty much the same speed. <coughs> if I go down and try and let's just try and get our speeds to be the same, our terminal speed. It's pretty close here now, so we're we're not much different. Very close. But I'm still drawing lots more current. So really making this change doesn't make a lot of sense because it's actually going to be slower um, we are uh, not gaining anything even on short bursts we're losing out and we're drawing more current so probably not a wise uh, a wise choice to go to that sort of timing level unless you're running on a really huge track and have lots of money to spend on motors so let's try going the other way. Let's go down to 20 degrees. Let's do, do some extremes here and just see what happens. So now you can see our current's way down. This thing would be running really cool. It would be no problem at all. Uh, but uh, we'd be getting lapped every second lap because we've got no speed. So let's crank our... Let's see if we can get more speed. So we're going to go up to the... Well, to 50. So we're at a gear ratio of about 4 to 1 now. Our initial current is quite a bit higher. 
exceptionals coming out of the corners. We're going to be drawing lots of current. Uh, our terminal, which is not lasting an awful long, long time, we're going to be drawing less. But uh, that's probably not going to be a good solution either. Um, we are going a lot further in the two-second time frame here. We're out accelerating in the short term. And in the long term, we're a meter, a full meter ahead at the end of the two seconds. Uh, but we're probably going to have to uh, drop our, our uh, pinion size down here a bit to get our current under control. So if we go down to this sort of level, now we are pretty much exactly the same. We're, we're doing a little better job coming out of the corners. We're getting better acceleration coming out of the corners. And we are still running uh, further at the end of the two second simulation here. Uh, we have significantly reduced the, uh, the current draw on the motor as well, especially out at the, uh, you know, most of your, your running is going to be in this sort of range, very short bursts, you know, under a second uh, of full throttle application. So, you know, you're probably looking at, in this case, the second model would probably be running a little hotter than the uh, main model. So that may not be a good choice either. Uh, so you can play around with this. You can go to you know, we can go to a 25 degree setting. We can go to 35 degree setting, and you can easily play around with the the um, gearing and uh, gain some insights into uh, what's going to work for your car, and hopefully help you understand uh, why you may be getting too hot and not really gaining an awful lot in performance. So that's it for this one. I uh, hope that helps you guys out. Blinky Racing could be a new experience for you. Stay tuned for more.